Poof a magic genie has appeared. What do you wish for? Five minutes of sleep leaves me as rested as eight hours. I wish for a burger from this this pub that used to be a block from my campus but closed like five years ago. A strong, your, intuition. If I can't wish for more wishes, I wish I could change the rules. I wish for more wishes. More puffs. The ability to control reality at will. Who do you think should be the next president of the USA? Someone under 35 with at least 40 years of experience. Have at least bachelor degree. Is willing to work overtime. Proficient in Ms. Words. Excel. And PowerPoint and forklift certified. Two kids stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. My grandma said I'm a handsome young man and I will become a famous president one day so me. Me. My platform is a national two hours nap in the middle of the day. Someone who can admit they are wrong from time to time. An inanimate carbon rod. Poof a magic genie has appeared. What do you wish for? Five minutes of sleep leaves me as rested as eight hours. I wish for a burger from this this pub that used to be a block from my campus but closed like five years ago. A strong, your, intuition. If I can't wish for more wishes, I wish I could change the rules. I wish for more wishes. More puffs. The ability to control reality at will. Who do you think should be the next president of the USA? Someone under 35 with at least 40 years of experience. Have at least bachelor degree. Is willing to work overtime. Proficient in Ms. Words. Excel. And PowerPoint and forklift certified. Two kids stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. My grandma said I'm a handsome young man and I will become a famous president one day so me. Me. My platform is a national two hours nap in the middle of the day. Someone who can admit they are wrong from time to time. An inanimate carbon rod. What is an untruth people tell themselves to feel better about life or world they live in? Crime doesn't pay. I know someone that embezzled over $1 million and got probation and has to pay back less than 10%. Restitution. If I only get this over with, everything is going to be easy. Quote. Life never runs out of waves to shake you. But while it isn't easy, you do learn to surf better. People always get what's coming to them. The reality is that sometimes the people who tormented you all those years ago are likely living pretty good lives. That the world is just karma as a bitch. What's coming to them, etc. If you just work hard it'll all work out in end. There's a few but the main one I tell myself if that the people who hurt me are also hurting. As a kid I thought people bullied each other because their lives sucked. And then I realized my life also sucked and I didn't treat other people like that so what was there? Excuse. What's the smallest amount of power you've seen someone drunk on? I'm a video engineer at a TV station. One of our producers got her husband hired as my assistant. He was menacing. He would barge into my office to try and catch me doing something wrong. Kept telling me he was going to take my job. He was previously unemployed for years. I had degree and 10 years at the station. He was so confident that he was going to take my job. The last straw was him screaming at me in the hall. He didn't last two weeks. His wife was mortified. I once helped with first aid at half marathon and one guy had a single job to do. He had to stand at the bottom of a road and direct the runners down one of two roads. Since there were barriers across the road it was a no-brainer and impossible to screw up in any way, shape or form. He decided that, despite the road being closed to traffic and contrary to the very simple instructions he was given, 
the runners must run on the pavement. Cars equals road therefore on foot equals pavement. He screamed at them and forced hundreds of people to squeeze along the pavement even chasing after anyone who put a foot on the road yelling at them. People were tripping each other up in the small space and when I got a couple of first aid patients, I called around to see if I could get someone to stop him because he was drunk on absolutely zero power. Eventually someone shifted him and left no replacement. Not even a direction sign and it all runs smoother than when he was there. Nobody took the wrong road showing that he was less effective than empty space. Handing out sodas from a cooler, ice chest he decided it was up to him to choose what flavor people received. Because it wasn't self-serve. When the pettiness of this was brought up, he decided this authority was the hill he would die on. It became quite the thing. A woman created a group on Facebook for one of my hobbies for organizing meetups and stuff like that. She shared it around on other groups and naturally hundreds of others joined. Things only went downhill after that. Nobody was allowed to post except her. Seemingly every comment, mostly related to the meetup details, would set her off and cause her to lash out or ban a member completely. I got banned but can't remember the exact details. I think I responded to a post like, I can't make it. But everyone have fun. Which prompted her to berate and guilt trip me. Eventually she went off the deep end and deleted the entire group to punish everyone. Somebody else created a new group. Which everyone joined. And it is still going strong to this day. The woman in the office that was in charge of the coffee fund. She had a list of rules for using the coffee machine. One was you couldn't brew any after 1 p.m. Even though we had a few people that liked coffee in the afternoon. Then she didn't buy coffee with the fund because people weren't following the rules. So someone else just bought coffee and brought it in. She didn't like that either. I think eventually the people she clashed with just brought in a new machine and did their own coffee fund. That woman was crazy. Edit. By the way this was a government job years ago and I've only had government jobs. Don't know if they have rules against providing coffee but I've never worked one where they did. Newer ones just have the pod machines now so easier to just stock your own coffee. Every gaming clan I've ever been in. The really fun ones were when the leader would be unable to make it to that night's festivities and would temporarily mod someone else. Almost every time. Instant power monger. Next day, what in the fuck did you do? And removal. Like they forgot it was temporary. What are some of the things normal in your country but weird or rude outside in other countries? No smiling, no small talks, no contacts with strangers unless necessary, being too direct. Actually telling people how you're doing when they ask you how you're doing. We don't use a lot of polite phrases just for the sake of being polite. So when people ask, how are you? It's interpreted as a genuine question rather than polite small talk or a greeting. My grandma once asked a cashier how she was doing and she replied, not great. I have type 2 diabetes. I'm from Norway. In my native country, when you go to a wedding, it is customary to steal the bride and you can bring her back only after you've been paid and then punished by the groom or the godfather. Really weird now that I think of it. I grew up in Australia and migrated to Ireland about 10 years ago. First thing I noticed was people in Ireland really like to talk about death in every day. Conversation. Who died? When the mass is. The removal of the body and the anniversaries of their death. It's so normal in conversation. In house it's rather taboo. There's a difference in the tone of conversation when talking about death. Eating sprinkles for breakfast I grew up in Amsterdam, Netherlands, Holland, where for breakfast I would have hagelslag which is a Dutch type of chocolate sprinkles which would be served on bread. 
When I moved to America people considered it very weird and for a while I didn't know why. Now I know that for Americans it is very weird because for them it's more of a dessert food. Rationing electricity. Not short term like during a hurricane or an earthquake. We've had this going for years straight. My city gets one hour of electricity. Then it's lights out for the next five hours. Some other cities have a fair-ish three hours on. Three hours off schedule. History buffs. What is a commonly held misconception that drives you up the wall every time you hear it? During Paul Revere's midnight ride he did not shout, the British are coming. The mission depended on secrecy so shouting loudly the British are coming, kinda defeats the whole purpose. According to several sources, e.g. eyewitness accounts, his warning was likely, the regulars are coming out, or some variation of that and probably not loud enough to wake up a village, as of seen in some media renditions. Edit. If people would like to know the most accurate information regarding what Paul Revere did, probably the most complete account is the letter Paul Revere sent to Jeremy Belknap, corresponding secretary of the Massachusetts Historical Society in 1798. Transcripts can be found online. Medieval peasant food was bland. People seem to think peasants only ate bread and potatoes with no seasoning. In reality, while salt was indeed a luxury they often couldn't afford, they had access to plenty of herbs to flavor their food. They also had access to things like fish and other meats. So they weren't just eating bread, though it was an important staple of their diet. If you're interested in how a bunch of civilizations ate throughout history, check out Tasting History on YouTube. It's a great source of historical information and entertainment. Edit. Meant to include this originally. But as others have also stated, things like potatoes and tomatoes didn't exist in medieval Europe either. They're native to the Americas. So for most of history, the majority of the world didn't even know they existed. People didn't die at 30 to 40. The high infant mortality rate skews the average. If you could survive into your teen years you had a pretty good chance of living into your senior years. Obviously there are a lot of factors to consider. E.g. class, gender, occupation, where you lived, etc. That Rosa Parks was just some nice old lady who wouldn't give up a bus seat. She was a political activist who meticulously planned that specific instance of civil protest. Edit. To clarify, my comment was not intended to be negative or derogatory toward Mrs. Parks or her contributions to racial activism in any way. I merely wanted to highlight the inconsistencies in how we learned history and how the narrative can shape our perceptions without us questioning anything. I think it is important, especially within the discipline of history, to seek out answers for ourselves and make our own determinations. That if you were a peasant you could marry whoever you wanted for love and if you were a noble, royal or the like you could only marry for power during the medieval period. Higher class people could and did, though it wasn't common. Marry for love and most of the time peasant marriages were arranged for the same reason as noble ones were. To link two families together. You very rarely got to marry who you liked it was usually who your parents liked. Also Prima Nocta has, as far as I know was never actually being recorded as a thing. Louis Michel Le Pelletier cast the single vote that sentenced Louis XVI. Actually the vote was a pretty clear majority in favor of execution. Subscribe my brothers.